So Windows Central released an article saying that with the release of the Steam Deck, now is the time to see an updated Vita or an Xboy. Not sure I agree. Let's talk about why. A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Just so you know, Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of awesome classes for creative and curious people like yourself or like me. Have you ever wanted to learn how to paint? Maybe discover the ins and outs of photography? Well, Skillshare has all of that and more in classes that are designed for real life to keep you moving forward on your creative journey. Like the Basics of Hand-Drawn Animation course by Johannes Fast. I love animation and I thought it would be cool to give it a try. I don't know, maybe I secretly want to make Robitech anime or something. <laughs> Johannes walks you through the basics of principles of animations in his course and teaches you the theory behind animating text, making an object bounce, liquid animations, and eventually a walk cycle. Let's just say by the end of the course, I think I'll have what it takes to get started on some sweet animations. And learning has never been easier with zero ads to interrupt your flow, and you can use the Skillshare no matter where you're at on your PC, laptop, tablet, or more. So click on the link on the description below to overclock your brain with Skillshare today. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get one month free trial at Skillshare. Maybe you just missed the fact that Steam announced a brand new handheld PC called the Steam Deck. Let's hope it was because you were on that like Blue Origin rocket or maybe on Virgin Galactic and you didn't quite make it to space. I, I know, okay. This is essentially another reason to buy a bunch of other games you probably won't play and add them to your back catalog on Steam because now it may just be better on a portable. And yes, I did pre-order a few of them. And if you're asking why I got more than one, I wanna see if I can upgrade it, okay, okay? Okay, but just in case you do not know, let me catch you up. The Steam Steam Deck is a fully functioning PC running a modified version of Linux that is running an AMD custom APU that uses both Zen 2 and RDNA 2, meaning that this has all the latest bells and whistles for ray tracing, etc., when will support things like FSR, which is AMD's DLSS, if you're just curious. But I know different technologies, but that's essentially the way to think of it. And this is for PC games, meaning that they're gonna get all of the wide variety of support for things like even native ray tracing. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Honest, you are not going to be turning on native ray tracing because we know what kind of performance hit that is. Thank you FSR and thank you DLSS 2.0. It is a bit bigger than a Nintendo Switch, which if you don't know how big a Switch is, it's about seven inches long, four inches high, about half an inch thick. Now while the Steam Deck is just a bit bigger at 11 inches long, five inches high, and two inches thick. So okay, honestly that is a bit more beefy. Now this isn't really a video about the Steam Deck per se and its capabilities, but I, I just kind of want to nail home a point and, and just follow with me. My thought process will make more sense. It's got a seven inch screen and on the more expensive model, it's got M.2 storage and also has LPDDR5 memory, which gives it a memory bandwidth of 88 gigs per second. Oh, and you can use a dock and have it work just like a normal PC if you want. Though, remember, obviously at higher resolutions, you're gonna take a performance hit pretty quickly. Now the resolution on the game screen is actually only 720p, but let's be honest, at seven inches, that's great. And it'll run most modern games, according to Steam, at high to medium settings at high frame rates. The control sticks feel good. And better yet, people really also like the track pads for those who've had hands-on. This is a well thought out piece of hardware. And in pre-sales or reservations alone, this has the potential to sell a ton of units, which is great because we want Steam to do more with this hardware and see an iteration. Now back to the question at hand though. I mean, with all those units selling, it means that there's a lot of desire for a powerful handheld system that people are showing that through their wallets. And I do love my Nintendo Switch. And a lot of people were disappointed by the OLED announcement and the fact that it wasn't a Nintendo Switch Pro because though the device is great, it only plays AAA Nintendo experiences, which are different than the graphical powerhouse AAA experiences like Battlefield 2042 or anything else that your PC heart desires launching later this fall. So of course people are now asking the question, what about Xbox and PlayStation? We have an answer for PC, we have an answer for Nintendo, but what about the Xbox and the PlayStation? Would it be a good time for them to release a handheld? And this all brings me down to this quote that I saw in this article from Windows Central Gaming, which asked just that. 
Something Xbox currently lacks though is a dedicated handheld device that can compete with the Nintendo Switch. My colleague Daniel Rubino has written about that there's no excuse for Microsoft not to make an exploit to rival Nintendo Switch, and I fully agree with him, especially now that Xbox Game Pass has become a global hit and Xbox Cloud Gaming has become a very refined and polished experience. Imagine an exploit with Steam Deck level specs that could be used to play Xbox Game Pass titles natively or stream them through Xbox Cloud Gaming. The potential here is nothing short of insane and Microsoft would be foolish not to make a handheld device like this. Is Daniel right? Do they absolutely have to do it? I wanna unpack that a bit because we're just gonna focus on Xbox. Frankly, just because PlayStation is actually a bit harder to read. They had a streaming service and then they kinda didn't. And then they've made some things go to PC and they kinda haven't. And that's not to say that I'm anti-PlayStation. I'm just saying that with Xbox and specifically when I saw this, it actually made a little bit more sense to kinda unpack it for them. So Xbox has actually been pretty clear in terms of direction if you really look at Xbox strategy as of late. I don't think what Brandon is saying actually fits. And honestly, as of December, I think what he's asking for actually may already exist. In the past number of years, you've seen Microsoft diversify what Xbox means. The Xbox has moved beyond just being a console and more about their insane library of studios and titles being where gamers actually are. Even if that isn't on Xbox. I mean, case in point, some of their games like Minecraft or Ori and the Blind Forest are already on rival systems like PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. You now have Xbox Game Pass on PC, which I know Windows is a part of the Microsoft family, I get it, but I'm not sure that's why it's on PC. And with Game Cloud, you also now have people playing AAA Xbox experiences streamed to their tablets, phones, or even non-gaming laptops. In fact, in a recent social media campaign from Xbox, you saw people using controllers like the DualShock, playing Xbox games and celebrating that diversity via xCloud. It's about how you want to play and the titles being available where you are and what controller, what device, that doesn't matter as much as you're enjoying the experience and it's about being awesome for you. So what does this have anything to do with the Steam Deck? Well, because of the Steam Deck, you don't need an exploit. What you need is Proton, which is the compatibility layer that allows you to play Windows titles on the modified version of Linux so if Xbox Game Pass for PC for Steam Deck using Proton, which they allow you to use. I mean, Microsoft already released a ton of games on Steam, so why not Game Pass? Then you have what Brendan quoted, a Steam Deck level device, AKA the Steam Deck, that could be used to play Xbox Game Pass titles natively or stream them through Xbox Cloud Gaming. When you think about it, why does Microsoft need to duplicate what Steam already worked so hard on and will continue to work on for future iterations, given it is probably going to be as popular as it is? Oh, and by the way, this is just to completely blow your mind. If you wanted to, you could just take a Steam Deck, wipe it, which Steam already confirmed you can do with their FAQ on IGN, install Windows 10, and use this as a Game Pass device already if that's all you were gonna play, of course. Are you locked into Steam or can you, because you mentioned, you mentioned this a minute ago, Pierre-Luc, or can I log into the Microsoft Store with my Game Pass Ultimate account or my Epic Game Store account? Again, you can really do anything that you would expect a PC to be able to do. So the answer to those things is yes. Yes, excellent. I mean, again, we don't know what the experience would be like with the Steam Deck outside of the native OS in terms of its Steam integration. So technically, this is already what Brendan said, is the fact that it could be a portable Windows 10 device that will run Game Pass for PC or xCloud for PC. I mean, if we really want this and we wanna have our cake and eat it too, then ideally, really close to launch or even at launch, we just see a new Steam title or Steam support for Game Pass and now people can enjoy their Xbox experiences on Steam Deck and perhaps maybe even things like Alienware their handheld device, or any other portable PC platform that may release without pulling an Apple. I mean, why not? More games sold and more places for more people to enjoy and allow them to use the form factor and device they want and not have the opposite problem. Let's just go down the path of if Xbox decided to make a dedicated device, then they would need to worry about recouping their investment. I mean, that is more than likely going to result in a closed ecosystem because they have to worry about things like attach rates. Now, if you don't know what attach rate is, that's when a console basically says, I have to sell so many games and attach them to the system, so therefore I am making up for the investment I've made on the hardware. And what this does for gamers, is that really what we want? Or do we just wanna play our games the way that we want on the hardware we choose? 
Finally, where I feel the real opportunity is, is actually in xCloud, where people on Android, iOS, macOS, Windows 10 can all access this by going to xbox.com slash play and using Xbox Series X server blades to play the hottest Xbox games streamed regardless of the hardware. I think game streaming has gotten a bad rap because of things like Google Stadia, etc. And I ask you, if you haven't given xCloud a try, go get a three day free trial. I mean, I think you can actually just do that now and just give it a try. This could be where device really starts to matter less and less as a native and server-based gaming architecture start to trade places. I mean, especially when folks like researchers in Japan who just broke the bandwidth record transferring 319 terabits, that's terabits with a T, with 5G, 6G, and Wi-Fi 6 streaming games is going to become less and less of an issue and latency is also going to get better and better, as well as coverage because of what they can actually cover with a single transmitter. The device doesn't matter because the server hardware can run it. So you don't need to worry about upgrading all the time. Microsoft or Sony could worry about just upgrading the hardware and you can just focus on enjoying the game. The future is getting there and it's actually a whole lot closer than people think. I mean, in the time it would take to Microsoft to develop and bring to market a handheld device, given that they started from zero and they weren't doing this already, who knows? Most of the problems may be moot because the speed and infrastructure is there for true game streaming anyway. And it kind of feels like that's where the strategy is already. So do we need an X-Boy or do we need a Vita? I think no. I think what we need is companies to do more of what they are already doing and put them on the Steam Deck as it is a PC. And we already support PC. Xbox already supports PC. PlayStation already supports PC. And there is going to be a big enough market. Trends are already showing that there will be. And let's just make it possible to play by giving us an app and use it the native way so we can play on the device. But does it matter what I think? I mean, I would love to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below. You think we need an exploit? Why do you think we need an exploit? I'd love to know your thoughts. And I'm not gonna slam if you disagree with me. Are you even going to get a Steam Deck? I'd love to know that as well. Let me know all of that down below. While you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video right here on the channel. You know what, we also have a live show. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. We'd love to have you pop in, come chat with us, get live builds, see all sorts of really great stuff. Also, you can check us out on all the socials, at Robitech, makes it really easy. Instagram, TikTok, you name it, we're there. Except for OnlyFans, still not there. Outside of that, guys, we hope you had an amazing time, and we're looking forward to talking to you on the next one.